Well, Nadezha, shall we start your talk? Yeah, okay. Um, okay. Um, um, okay. Uh, today I'll be uh, talking about the interface polynomial as a not a link invariant. Uh, firstly, I will define it uh, for graphs and uh, speak about the photon relation for graphs, and then I will uh, move to the metroids uh, for invariant for them and uh, the fact that interface polynomial is link invariant. Okay. Um, uh, one second. Okay. Um, yes, in order to define the interlaced polynomial for graphs, we should define the pilot operation. Uh, it's defined the following way. We uh, consider uh, an arbitrary simple graph and uh, two of its vertices A and B that are adjacent. And then we uh, split the vertices of our graph, all other vertices into four classes. The first one is uh, the vertices that are adjacent to A and not to B. The second one is the opposite situation. The third one is the vertices connected both to A and B and fourth one to none of them. So uh, after that we split the vertices, we uh, change the adjacency of uh, all vertices in first three classes. So some vertices were connected, then we delete these uh, edges and uh, if they were not connected, we add these edges. Um, okay. Uh, then we can move to the polynomial uh, definition uh, is defined the following way. Uh, if we have a graph that doesn't have edges, then uh, the interest polynomial of it is uh, x in power n, where n is the number of uh, vertices of uh, the graph and if uh, our graph uh, has at least one edges, we at least one edge, then we take uh, one of the edges, uh, for example, connecting vertices A and B and uh, uh, do the following. Uh, we say that the interlaced polynomial of uh, our graph G is the sum of interlaced polynomials of two graphs. The first one is uh, G minus A. Uh, this is a graph obtained from G by deleting uh, a vertex A and uh, all edges connecting A with other vertices. And the second one is uh, the pivot G A B uh, minus B. Uh, for example, if you have a graph, why isn't it writing? Because it's in the laser, okay. Um, uh, for example, if you have a graph on three vertices having two edges, then we uh, firstly say, for example, that this vertice is I, A, and B, and uh, say that the polynomial is the sum of polynomials of these two graphs. And then we apply our Gauss formula once again and uh, get that. Uh, uh, result is the following sum. And uh, the sum is uh, x squared plus x. Uh, okay. Um, I'm sorry, something is wrong with my tablet. Um, Yeah, okay, that's okay. Uh, then let's move to the photon relation progress. As Polina said uh, in her talk, uh, we can consider an algebra of graphs that is uh, graded. And this uh, allows us to 
consider parentalized polynomial as uh, a polynomial defined on algebra by um, continuing its uh, it to linear combinations of graphs by linearity, and uh, by saying that uh, the if graph is a disjoint union of uh, two graphs, then we can say that uh, value of uh, linearized polynomial on this graph is product of linearized polynomials of uh, those two graphs. Um, okay. Um, then we can define uh, the for formulation for graphs itself. Uh, we say that uh, a function defined on graphs is a uh, for invariant if the following equation holds. Uh, and uh, here we mean uh, here G prime AB is uh, a graph obtained from G by deleting HAB. Uh, no, by switching the adjacency. So if there was an agent, we delete it. And there, if there was none, then we add the stage. Uh, and uh, there, let me draw an example. Uh, if we have the full graph on four vertices, then I can take some vertices A, called A and B. Uh, then uh, G prime AB will be this graph, and uh, the other operation is a bit more complicated. We uh, change the adjacency with A of all vertices connected with B. Here, all vertices uh, are, well, all the vertices that are not A and B are connected with B, so we obtain the following graph. And the proposition of this two operation is one. So, uh, okay. Then we can uh, well, we know that the interest polynomial of graphs is uh, for invariant. Uh, this is a result that was proved by Dan Um And uh, this facts allow us to um, the consequence of this uh, fact is that the interest polynomial of graphs uh, defines um, a not invariant. Uh, so we can uh, think about the question if uh, this polynomial also um, defines a link invariant and uh, the answer first question is uh, yes, and uh, in order to explain this fact, we should uh, consider um, another more complicated structure called uh, delta matroids. Uh, so um, delta matroids are uh, special kind of uh, set systems or set system is uh, where uh, consisting of a finite set and uh, some uh, subset of uh, uh, the set of its subsets. And uh, we call the first set the ground set and uh, the second uh, one is the set of visible sets. Um, so the automatroid is uh, a set system satisfying the symmetric uh, exchange axiom that you can see on the screen, as well as uh, several examples. And uh, it appears that uh, we can uh, mm, Or we can, uh, for every graph we should have, we can uh, consider a data matroid corresponding to it. Uh, and uh, we also can uh, define the interest polynomial uh, for data matroids. 
that will be uh, connected with the uh, transpernormal graphs uh, for the metroids uh, corresponding to graphs. Uh, so the way to define the transpernormal and the metroids is the following. Uh, firstly, we define the distance from a set uh, system or the metroid to a subset in the following way. We just uh, consider all visible sets and uh, take the number of elements in the smallest symmetric difference uh, of X and this visible set. And then we say that the interlaced polynomial uh, of the Delta Metroid is uh, the sum uh, by all subsets of uh, the ground set of X, X uh, in the power of a distance from the ultimate to uh, to this set phi. Uh, for example, if we consider a ultimate with the ground set in three elements one, two, and three, and uh, three visible sets, an empty set, and uh, two sets containing one, two, and two, and three, then uh, it's um, the test polynomial of it will be uh, calculated the following way. And uh, uh, we um, know that the connection between these two polynomials uh, defined, uh, I can just look very differently, uh, is uh, quite straightforward. Uh, we just have uh, they're, they're connected uh, in the following way. Uh, if we consider a graph and uh, the metroid corresponding to it and uh, make change of our variable from x to x minus 1, then these polynomials will be equal. Um, so um, Now let's uh, say how, how the four-term relation uh, is defined for the ultimate roads. Um, this uh, definition, this the definition of uh, operations uh, of uh, handle sliding and exchanging of and uh, of handles. Uh, they came from the definition uh, of the photon relation for ribbon graphs. Uh, therefore, their names are uh, describing those operations. And uh, these two operations are defined the following way. We uh, consider all subsets uh, of the ground set uh, not containing versus A and B. And uh, if the subset uh, with vertex B added to it is feasible, then we uh, either add or delete the subset X uh, with A added, depending on the fact if it was uh, already feasible or not. Um, and the operation is uh, defined in a similar way. Uh, the, so we say that uh, a function uh, f defined on uh, binary delta metroids uh, is a uh, foreign variant if uh, the following quote holds for every delta metroid and every pair of elements of its ground set. And I forgot to say that uh, we consider the separation and the photon separations and the photon relation only for binary delta metroids so that are um, either delta metroids uh, corresponding to um, 
graphs or uh, that we solve uh, this uh, delta matroids. Uh, Yeah, and uh, uh, we had that the interlaced polynomial for binary delta matroids uh, satisfies the four term relation. Uh, and uh, therefore, uh, uh, it determines a fine type invariant of links. Um, and uh, I can prove that the test polynomial decides this relation uh, in the following way. I uh, it appeared that this uh, relation holds for every subset phi of uh, what we consider in. Um, sorry, just a little bit. Well, there is moment here. Uh, for every set five, we take some over in definition of polynomial. Uh, we can see that for every delta matroid we have, and every subset, we have two pairs of equal um, summons. Uh, like other one uh, operation doesn't uh, change uh, the summand or another one, or both of them. Um, and uh, on the screen, you can see example of four polynomial and uh, all summands for them. Um, okay. Um, Also, we can uh, define the. Also, we can define the Hopf algebra of binary delta matroids in a way now just to the way we do it for graphs. So we also uh, consider graded. Uh, algebra uh, where every space is uh, spent by. Uh, binary delta matroids with a certain number of uh, elements in the ground set. Uh, and we also can define the product of delta matroids by uh, taking the union of their ground set and the rest all the physical sets that we had. Uh, now, just by uniting the physical sets of the first uh, delta matroid and second one, and uh, uh, we can define the core product of delta matroid in a way also now just to the way we do it for graphs, uh, and uh, as well as we do it for graphs, we can consider the space of primitive elements. Uh, mm, and uh, consider the way the polynomial acts on these primitive elements. And uh, for, inter for the interlaced polynomial, we know that uh, for uh, graphs, we for graphs it uh, uh, selects. Uh, the integer part of n divided by two uh, primitive elements in degree n. This is also a result of uh, and uh, for the metroids, we have uh, another result. We uh, know that in, uh, the interest polynomial for Delta matroids selects uh, n primitive elements in degree n, and we can uh, prove it by constructing a sequence of delta matroids that have linearly independent um, 
values of matrix polynomial uh, for every n. Okay, I think that's all. So thank you for your attention. Okay, Nadezha, thank you very much for your very interesting talk. Are there uh, further questions to, to the speaker? I have a question, please. Yeah, yeah, Alexander, please. Uh -huh. This is a very stupid question, but probably for Sergei Vando, who likes this kind of questions. Are there some analogies of the four terms relation in number theory, or maybe in classical analysis? Uh, in fact, I do not know of uh, one, but uh, uh, there is a way to understand the four term relation as uh, the uh, Jacobi identity for Lie algebra. What sounds like that? Yeah, uh, it's in a sense very similar and very closely related to the one. And uh, I probably have a question to Nadezhda. Uh, maybe you are able to explain, there are a few minutes left, what is the relationship between delta matroids and embedded graphs? It will be uh, so that uh, people who have not heard about that before will be, will be able to understand this connection. Well, okay, I can try. Uh, so yeah, there, uh, there is also a connection between delta matroids and uh, uh, embedded graphs, as uh, Yekin Kutinovich said. And for an arbitrary embedded graph, we can uh, there is a an delta matroid corresponding to it, and uh, we can define it in the following way. Example, if I have, let me, oh, let me draw an amateur embedded graph. Uh, yeah, we can consider the set of its edges and say that it is the ground set of our delta matroid. So um, for this example, we have like three uh, edges. So the ground set of delta matroid will be one, two, and three. And uh, there is also a way to determine feasible sets for this uh, delta matroid. We just take all possible subsets of edges and uh, See if the uh, consider a subgraph. We can see it this way, uh, and uh, see the number of uh, boundary activity components of it. And if it will be equal to one, then we, this set will be feasible. And if not, then it won't be feasible. Like for this example, if we take one, then we and we'll have these two connectivity components, so I won't do it. So there is one visible set containing only two, another one containing only, only three. And if we take two and three both, then we also have two connectivity components, so that's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's uh, the way we can associate, associate uh, delta matroid to Namikuri embedded graph. Yeah, and uh, the four term relations uh, for delta matroids are simply uh, a way to write down Vasiliev four term relations for embedded graphs on the language of delta matroid, mm -hmm. which makes them. Mm -hmm. Uh, so so the, that was why Nadezhda was speaking about handle slidings and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, okay, Alexandria. Uh, just continue our discussion. 
What about some classical polynomials like Chebyshev two variable polynomial or something like that? Maybe they are also related with, or maybe just some different equation which is common in some theory. Mm -hmm. Supposed to be. Uh, the, the, about that kind of equations, I do not know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not kind of Chebyshev to variable. I don't know exactly. There are many different definitions. But, but uh, we need to define them as functions on the uh, combinatorial structures on some combinatorial objects. Around yeah, no, this is uh, understandable. So you have very, very large generalization of it, but maybe some origin is somewhere in numbers uh, maybe maybe, but, maybe mm -hmm. but i do not know <laughs> no like uh, this is a uh, well just 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 a question mm -hmm. okay well actually there are some other uh, polynomials for links and nodes uh, well studied so the alexander polynomials the well, Jones polynomes, the Kaufman polynomes. Are there any relationships between uh, uh, these in the interlace uh, uh, polynomes? And uh, yeah, no, they are three terms. What well, this is a small problem. Three terms. Yeah. There are four terms. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or oh, I see. I see. No <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You are right. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that is not uh, true because, uh, for example, we know. Uh, more or less everything about the Alexander polynomial yeah. uh, on uh, this language. And uh, uh, the paper by Polina Filipova was aimed uh, at understanding the Collard Jones polynomial. Mm -hmm. uh, I see. Yeah. And uh, this is exactly the questions she studies and. Uh, Mm -hmm. He has some additional variable or something like that. It's, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I see. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Are there further questions to Nadezhda or Sergei or to Alexander? So there is something like a discussion between them. So. If anyone would like to say something. Well, if not, then uh, let us end again Azerza, for this very interesting, nice talk. Thank you very much. It was, yeah, it was exciting. 